Hello out there in AV land. I've been a resident of this strange realm for quite some time, and I've seen video cabling change quite dramatically over this period. Uh, from RGBHV cabling, carrying analog signals back in the day, to Crestron DM Ultra or Cat7A cable for digital video at high resolutions these days. This cable is a little bit different to terminate than your standard Cat5 or Cat6 cable, and that's because it's constructed differently. It has this braided shield, and then each individual pair has a foil shield. This one doesn't because I cut it off already to show you what's inside. So how do we terminate this thing? Let's take a look at what we're going to use first. First you need the cable and obviously the connectors. We're using these Liberty FTP SA0As. You're also going to need a pair of snips to help you terminate the cable, as well as some flush cutters. You're also going to need a pair of pliers or channel locks. And for the love of all that is holy, please test your cables when you're done terminating them. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is start prepping the cable, right? Wrong. The first thing we're going to do is open the package of the connector and get the boot out of there. This boot is obviously going to go on the cable, but it looks like it doesn't fit. Luckily, these boots are actually adjustable. They're made to be cut to size to fit different sizes of cable, different diameters. So if you look closely, you'll see a little nub that's holding the rings of the boot together. If you cut those nubs, you'll be able to cut rings off the boot and make the opening diameter a little bit wider each time you cut a ring off. So I'm going to start here because this seems roughly like it might match the diameter of my cable. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And it looks like that doesn't fit, so let me cut a little bit more off. Remember, start small, take off a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more until you get down to the size that you want, so you don't end up too short. Once the boot fits on the cable, slide it on and slide it down out of your way, because we're going to strip the outer jacket off. Take your snips and measure about two and a half inches back from the end of the cable. That's about from the fulcrum to the tip of your snips. And we're not going to cut the cable here. We're just going to score the outer jacket very lightly. That's just a little scratch. Now we're going to take the cable and grab it right by the score, and we're going to bend it back and forth. And this is going to break the outer jacket so that we can pull it off without damaging what's inside. If you've done this correctly, your braided shield will still be all in one piece. Now what we need to do is push this braided shield back over itself and fold it back over the outer jacket of the cable, just like that. I'm going to smooth it down a little bit. And this is more shield than we need, so we're going to take our snips and we're going to cut it down to size. What size? Well, it's got to fit under this foil adhesive bit, right? So we're going to use that to measure, and we're going to cut it down so that it's a little bit shorter than that piece of foil. Once you've got all the stragglers cut down, you're going to take your copper foil piece, and you're going to pull the backing off of it to expose the adhesive. Like any sort of sticker, be careful not to let it stick to itself or anything other than what you want it to stick to. What do you want it to stick to? The outside of the cable. You're going to apply it right at the end of the cable, at the end of the jacket, around the braided shield that you just folded back and snipped back. You want to make sure it's a nice tight fit, not too many wrinkles, and try not to tear it. It's pretty fragile. Be careful with it. Just smooth it down with your fingers. Try to get any bubbles out of it so it makes a nice tight connection. Once that's done, you have to separate each of the pairs. We're doing this so that we can get at the individual foil wrapping that's around each pair, because that has got to go. Once you get a pair by itself, you can start peeling back the foil to try to open it up so that you can snip it off. You want to make the cut as close to the jacket as you can, and you only need to nick the edge of it because it's foil, and once you nick it, it'll be really easy to tear it. You don't actually have to cut it all the way off. Now you're going to repeat this process for the rest of the pairs. Be careful not to nick the insulation on these wires. It's really kind of soft and fragile. Once you've got the foil stripped off, it is time to install the wires into the retainer using the T568B color code. So we're going to start with the green and the browns. Those guys are going to go through these holes, which are the holes, the full holes in the retainer. They're on the bottom. The orange and blue are going to go through the top slots. This next part might seem obvious, but we do have to untwist each pair and straighten out the wires before we can get them through the retainer. A simple squeeze and pull on each wire should get it straight for you. It is easiest to do these guys in pairs of pairs, so putting all four wires that are next to each other through the holes at once. We're going to start with the green and browns. 
and we're going to arrange them such that they match the color code that's on the sticker. You're going to try to straighten them out a little bit and try to get them all through those holes at once. Slide that retainer as far down as it'll go, all the way down to the jacket. Now the other pair, the orange and blue pairs, they go in the slots on top of the retainer, and they enter in a slightly different way. You don't push them through. You hold them across the top of the slot, and then push it down. Now these guys are going to kind of click into place. You'll see what I mean when you do it. You hold the wire across the slot, and then push down until it's firmly held down in place by the retainer. Now it's time to cut the excess wire off using your flush cutters. Remember to cut as close as you can to the retainer to leave as little wire hanging off the end as possible. Now as awesome as this little color code flag is, it does have to come off, so pull that guy off, but hang on to him in case you need to re-terminate the cable later. Now take the shell of the connector and open it up. You're going to find a black rubber block thing in there. You can throw that away. That's just like a spacer for shipping. It's not important. Now you're going to take the retainer clip and insert it into the chassis. It's only going to go in one way. And then you're going to close it down a little bit and take your pliers and squeeze the connector shut. This is basically going to be like a punch down. So you want to squeeze it and make sure it's shut. Check it on both sides. Make sure you have a nice tight closure. If it's still open on either side, you can hit it again with the pliers just to make sure that it's punched down all the way and that it snaps shut. Now it's time to slide the boot into place. Slide it all the way down onto the connector. Make sure that the hump on the connector and the hump on the boot line up so that you can get a nice tight fit. And pull it down until the opening on the boot is flush with the edge of the connector. This is important because you need to be able to fit this zip tie through the hole in the boot and around that little neck thing on the end of the connector. This is what's going to hold the boot in place. So tighten down that zip tie. And because we don't want to get sliced to pieces later, we're going to use our flush cutters to cut the zip tie flush without leaving any sharp edges. I've had people tell me that they don't use the boots because they can't get the boot to stay on the connector. But as you can see here, I'm pulling pretty hard and this boot's not going anywhere. If your boots are moving around, you haven't done something right. So you might want to check on that. Guys, please always test your cables when you're done terminating. It'll save a lot of trouble in the long run. Now, I'm really sure that I pinned this cable out right. I followed the color code exactly, but I'm still testing. And it failed. What gives? Well, it turns out that after looking into this off camera, one of the wires, the insulation was slightly damaged and it was grounding out against the shield. But this is why we test, right? That's really all there is to it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions still, please drop me a comment. I'll do my best to answer you. And if you like the video, let me know that too. If there's anything that I could have explained a little better or differently, I'm always open to feedback. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you guys later. Have fun. Happy cabling.